be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For though you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal Him. Come to me, all you labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy, and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, the Lord, the passage for today is sort of a consolation to all of us who are living in this imperfect world. All sufferings come from the fact that we are in this imperfect world. We suffer because our body is not perfect. The weather is not perfect. That's why we have typhoons and other natural calamities because this world is imperfect. Our relationships, though we desire to make it uh, work, is not all the time perfect. Your partner, I, I'm not perfect. The people around, politics, government, even the church, as a human institution, is not perfect. That's why we will suffer because of our imperfections, either by reason of excess, we have so many things that are not good or by reason of defect we have less of the things that are good so we are not perfect only God is perfect but he suffered not because he is not perfect he suffered because we are not perfect. His beloved, a husband, a wife, for example, suffers because his, her partner, his spouse, is not perfect. So his suffering is not caused by his own failings or faults or flaws, but by the other's flaws. And that's the reason why Jesus suffered because we are not perfect and he loved us imagine loving a person who is not perfect you will suffer because of imperfections but this is a consolation for today Jesus said come to me I will resolve all your problems no he does not say that or come to me I will uh, I will uh, take you out of the real problem. No. Jesus said, come to me. Come to me. All you who labor and are burdened. And I will give you rest. So, I will not take away your problem. Just, just a little rest. Take my yoke upon you. Dugangan huh? pagin ni Lord ang akong problema. But take my yoke upon you. Meaning to say, upod kita. May problema ka. 
Pud kita. Pud ka. Yoke na itong duha kita. Papasaan sina. Take my yoke upon you. Pero ako mapangabudlay para sa imo. What is important is that you learn from me. For I am meek and humble of heart. And you will find rest for yourselves. Meaning, the Lord is like saying, I may not be able to take all your problems out of your life. But I will form you. I will teach you. I will shape you up. So, it's not the problem because immediately when we have problems, our human response immediately is to solve the problem or try to get out of the difficult situation. But for the Lord, it's not always just the response. The response is, I will not take away the problem as long as you have not learned your lessons, as long as you are not formed. So I'll give you problems, 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 problems. Until you are formed after the image of Christ. So come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. How? Take my yoke upon you. Do not focus on the problem first. Focus in your education, in your spiritual formation. Learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart and you will find rest wala man ging kuha ang problema ko but I'll find rest yes because I'll teach you how to manage that you will find rest for yourselves for my yoke is easy and my burden light now my explanation sa kita ko sa internet actually dugay ko na ni nga gina nanamian ako sa ni nabatian yun na ni siguro Rick Warren. I like Rick Warren bisan di sa Catholic ko. Iyang mga thoughts, iyang mga ideas. Next to Ratzinger and Saint Jose Maria Escriba. Rick Warren. Very good. Ano. Siling ya, God's purpose behind our problems. And he identified the biblical reasons. Siling ya, God uses problems to direct us. Sometimes God must light a fire under you to get you moving. Problems often point us in a new direction and motivate us to change from our own will to God's will. So, may problema kita, kay i-direct niya kita sa iya gusto kag sa hindi lang, imu, hindi lang gusto mo. Hindi agree ako sa ni. Uh, not all the time, nga muna, pero I think it's the reason. Kagin quote siya diri. Hamalya, Proverbs 20.30 Sometimes it takes a painful situation to make us change our ways. So problems give us directions. Second, Hamalya, God uses problems to inspect us. And he made an analogy. Very nice. People are like tea bags. If you want to know what's inside them, just drop them into hot water. That's why kung may problema kita, gagawa ang atong priority sa atong kabuhi, kagang atong gadya character and virtues. Kagustos ang Diyos, wawon din na. Ang goodness sa atong, generous, humble, meek, and humble of heart. Learn from me meek and humble humble before God I'm wrong, you're right meek using uh, power but under control that's meekness you have your power but it's under control imagine you have power and out of control meekness is you have your energy 
but placed under control. That's why we need meekness, most especially people in uh, positions. We use our power not to dominate or to exploit other people, weaknesses of other people. But we use our power in positions under control, grace under pressure. So that's it. Problems. God uses problems to, ins to inspect us. Another reason to correct us. Some lessons we learn only through pain and failures. To correct us. To na. To ni. Gina correctionan kita. Kun hambog kita kagula sa naga correct sa aton. Andam kita. Maabot ang problema. Correctionan kita sa ngatong problema. God uses problems to protect us from ourselves. Because our greatest enemy, aside from Satan, is ourselves. Our sinful self, I mean. That's why, kung may problema, ga-realize ka, ay ano ni man, ay ano ni man, nagkulang ako sinin, ano, tama ako ka mo sinin, tama. Ipabayaan ko ng ako ng responsibility, ganako. So, parang hindi ka na ma-expose pa kag sa media pa, matagaan niya ka sa problem from time to time to remind you, sige hada, ma-media ka gani, kag ma-humiliate ka, tapos ka gid. So, gamay-gamay lang ang problem, may nga-remind na sa imo, it should be your spouse, or your children, or your family, or your association. Ah, hindi kuya, no, na, hulatada, pari ka hulata. Gina-remind ka na sa ngayon mo, obispo. Gina-remind ka na sa ngayon mo, ano? Sige, hada. Mabalahuba ganin na sa media, mamay mo. Ote, nabalahuba. Ote, wala ka ginprotectionan sa ngayon problem because problems are meant to protect us also from more serious problems. And lastly, God uses problems to perfect us. Problems, when responded correctly, are character builders. So it's to direct us, inspect us, correct us, protect us, and perfect us. So expect may mga problema, unnecessary problems, susulbaron tan. Necessary problems, di natin masulbar. Necessary problems, umunin mga problem of the state of life. Gaugtas ka sa imo bata, alang-alang mo kuwaon na imo bata. Gaugtas ka sa imo bana, state of married life. Part ina, gaugtas ka sa amun na Di ka na, di naka-escape. Because it's part of your state of life. That's necessary problem. So instead nga mag-escape ka, find meaning sa problem. Ang aton ginahimo, ang call naton actually is not to be happy in this world. Because happiness here is very temporary. You notice, ang aton iya endurance, so to say, sang happiness, is like, like minutes or hours only. After ma-reach mo ang sang imo joy and happiness, wala ka na. Tapos na. Kaya ang happiness, ang endurance that's happiness in this world is very temporary. Because we are not meant for it in this world. Our structure, our body, is not meant for eternal happiness in this world. Hindi natin kaya ang eternal happiness, diri. Madamage kita kung ihatag na sa ato ng beatific vision. It's just a happiness. It's just like side effects or consolation sa ato. That's why ang ato call is to the pursuit of meaningfulness of life, not happiness. Not happiness. Happiness is just like incentives, consolations. But if you pursue meaningfulness of life, 
you will be happy. But if you see happiness, pursue happiness as your primary purpose, you will get frustrated. Because it's not lasting. But meaningfulness of life is lasting. Most especially when you dedicate your life to serve other people or to worthy profession or ministry. So, amuna, masafor kita, tungkol we desire not so much because of happiness, but because of meaningfulness of life. Pursuit of meaning, not happiness. If you are successful, enjoy it. Thanks be to God. Enjoy. But do not focus on it. Because that's not for you here in this world. It's for the next life. Eternal happiness. Here, find meaning. That's why tudlo ta sa mga kabataan, hindi magpangita sang happiness lang. Kundi magpangita sang meaning sa atong existence. Anong meaning sang life in this world? And when you find it, this unlimited and imperfect world, we will be happy from time to time because we have the foundation of a correct, right meaning for our existence. So do not pursue things to live on only, to live upon, but also pursue things that lead you to live for other people. Tanong kabataan natin, tuluan lang natin to live on material things, on money. And they don't find meaning because wala na sa ilang horizon, kag sa radar, in a sense of purpose of existence, to live for other people. Husband and wives, if you simply live with one another, and you do not live for one another, you will not find meaning in your marriage. You live with others, yes, but we live for others. Amen.